Welcome back to the course Learn Blockchain. Today we'll be learning an interesting topic, signatures, private and public key. We have already discussed about transactions, ETXOs, fees, balance and how wallet works. Today's video is still related to transaction. It will provide you an alternate angle. So this is where we left in the previous video. We understood how balance is calculated by the wallet, but here a question is arised. If you see the transactions are clearly visible. You can easily see who is performing that transaction, how much, to whom. So here arise the question of privacy. In this case, an attacker may come in and in the next block, he can add a transaction like Harry sends attacker one Bitcoin, even though Harry does not know about it. The attacker can calculate the UTXOs of Harry by going through the whole blockchain. So would that be possible? Yes, of course it is possible. The attacker just need to submit the transaction he must be sure to provide the correct UTXO of Harry, then put to the mempool. The mempool will accept since it has correct UTXO. Then it will broadcast to other mempools. Miner will pick the transaction and add to the block. So Harry loses his one Bitcoin. How do we add privacy to the system? How does blockchain ensure privacy? Well, it happens through private and public keys. Let's have a look. When you start with the cryptocurrency, you are assigned with the private key. It is your unique identity which you should never tell anyone. It's like your password. From private key we can generate public key and as the name suggests this key is shared publicly. You provide your public key so that sender can send you money. You can take analogy of bank account number for the public key. And now let's say you want to send some message. By message we mean anything, just text or in case of cryptocurrency, transactions. So you come up with a transaction, let's say John send Nick to Bitcoin. There is a private key, you come up with a transaction. Instead of putting the transaction directly into the blockchain, how can we make use of private and public key to make it secure and private? Well, the private key is combined with a message and together they generate a signature. So basically private key is used to sign the message and only you know the private key and therefore the signature will be unique to you. So this message will always go with the signature. The receiver of this message will receive both message and signature. Now the question is, how do the receiver verify that indeed it was you who signed the signature? Well that's where the public key come in. In blockchain, there is a verification function in the algorithm where anyone who has the message, signature and the public key of message sender, they can put them into the verification function and it results yes or no. Yes means verified, no means unverified. So basically what it does is, it uses the public key to access the signature in order to verify if the message has been signed by that private key that generates this public key or not. There is some sort of mechanism that allows public key to verify the message signed by the private key. And remember that you cannot reverse engineer private key from the public key. But you can always deterministically generate public keys from the private key. So now when you create a transaction, you always attach signature and your public key. And all of them will end in blockchain. This signature and public key will help the nodes and miners to verify the transaction. So this provides privacy and the example we discuss, Harry sends attackers one Bitcoin will not be possible. As the attacker will not have the private key of Harry and hence the transaction will be invalid. So this is all about the signatures, private and public key. I hope you enjoy it and on this note, I will see you in the next video.